One of the problems with trying to put web scraping directly into a web application is the fact that the scraping jobs take time to run and it blocks up your app whilst it's doing it. Scraping jobs could take minutes, if not even longer, and you just can't have your app being blocked for that long. In this video, we're gonna look at RQ, which is a wrapper around Python and Redis to easily set up a queue system with workers and jobs, etc., so we can hand our scraping tasks off, have them then have a job ID return back to us so we can actually get the results back from those there. Now you wanna think about this like if it was in your application, you might have a load of URLs in a database that you wanna update whilst your application can still do other things. This is a great way to do that. Or maybe you take in a load of URLs from your users. So if we have a look at uh, our queue here, we see we have queues, workers, results, and jobs essentially. So what we do is we create a queue in Redis, you can see here, and then we give it jobs. Now in our case, our job is going to be our scraper and the URL, we can do that. And then our, the, the RQ workers will automatically pick that up. They will run that function with that URL in our case, and we can then query back for the results. So to get started, we have this scraping code here. I'm just gonna quickly uh, run this so you get an idea of what should come back. You can see we're just getting some arbitrary product information here, and it's each page of my test site. So this works and obviously here's our run function. So let's come out of this and let's create a new file. Let's call it productq.py. So we're basically going to follow along with this to start with. So let me just get this back up here. So our queues, just so I've got a reference. So we're gonna do uh, from our queue, we're gonna import in the queue class. Let's make this one two bigger. Then we wanna do Redis. So from Redis, we're gonna import in our Redis instance. Then we wanna import in our scraper. So from scraper, we're gonna import run. This is the function that I just showed you. Uh, and then we wanna do, I'm gonna import in time because we're gonna need that just for the moment. So let's start with our Redis connection. This is gonna be equal to an instance of the Redis class here. Now, I have Redis running on my uh, local server. I have it running on the, all the time on there just so I can access it and I can use it whenever I need to. You can run, of course, run Redis on your local machine if you wanna test with it, or you can run it in the cloud if you wanna throw a little bit of money at it, it's entirely up to you. But it will be running, if this was a full web application, it would be running on either the same server as the web application or a, speci or a specified one if it grows too big. So mine is at this URL, 192.168.1.144, and the port is 32768, I hope. So now we can say uh, that the queue is going to be equal to our queue class here, and the connection is our Redis connection, like so. This is going to set up the queue on our uh, on our Redis cache there, so we can actually use it. Now, if you look over here, it basically says we can add jobs by doing q.inq. So that's essentially what we're going to do. Our URL is going to be equal to, and we'll grab the URL in just a second uh, for x in range. Uh, one to 13, because I know that that's how many URLs there are on that site. So let me just quickly re-grab this again, because I lost it. And there we go. Back to my product. And back here. Paste that in. And we'll make this an F string, so we can construct all of our URLs this way. And as I said, your URLs might come from your client, from your customers, or from your database or something like that. We're just constructing them like this. Now we wanna create all of our jobs with this. So for URL in, and I'm gonna do enumerate URLs, start is equal to one. And we need to make an IDX here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we need a job ID and I'm just gonna use the index from the list as the job ID. You probably have a better way of doing this depending on what you're trying to do. Then we can say our job is equal to q dot uh, in q, and we want our run function, the URL and the job ID, which is gonna be equal to, and this needs to be a string IDX. So I'm just turning the index, which would be an uh, uh, integer into a string there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say print length, let's say, uh, we'll see how long the queue is. So uh, q length, oh, I'm struggling with this, length of q like this, then. Just so we can see things are going on. Now, 
If we get back our results, if we come back over to the documentation again, let's make this bigger. We go up to results and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here and you'll see it gives you a couple of options. And we're gonna do this one here where we say job is job.fetch and then return value. So it's a shortcut for the whole thing. So this is what we're gonna to wanna to do. Now it does mention multiple results here and that's because if you run the same job over and over again, it actually stores multiple the, all the results from each, each run to a certain point, but we're gonna be doing just one. So we'll come back to our code and this is gonna be job is equal to our job and we need to import this in, auto import from our queue, see it pop up there, uh, fetch and we want the, is it ID is equal to, and let's ask for the first one. We need to give it our connection, which is the Redis connection that we created earlier. Then we can print job dot return value like so. And I'm gonna put uh, time dot sleep underneath this, just to give it a chance to complete this job in five seconds. So obviously it's been sent off and the job needs to be done. We need to do the scraping. So this looks about right. So we might need to fix a couple of other things, but I'm gonna come back over to my other terminal and we're gonna run our queue, our workers. Now this is obviously the same Redis we're connecting to and we have high default and low. Uh, this is just like a priority system. We're gonna ignore that for the moment. So our workers are running. Let's come back over here come out of this and we'll now run our product queue uh, Python file and you can see that we have plenty of things in the queue and we're waiting we're waiting we'll give that and now we have the our data come back now if I go back over to our uh, worker you'll see that we've actually completed all of the jobs there's all the page numbers you can see on the screen that I'm pointing to that you can't see and it's all there so the data is all there we just need to request it but what we want to do is we don't want to um, request the data in the same file that we're sending to the queue. So the idea is that we have the queue system in the middle and we send everything to it and then we wait and when we come back and we pick all the data back up from the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new file. So we'll say mvim uh, job collection.py. That sounds about right. So I'm going to import in. Uh, do from RQ, we'll import in RQ.job. We need the job thing, don't we? Import in job and from Redis, we'll import in Redis. We need to do the connection again, which I'll just quickly type out. So now we can actually go and collect all the data from our jobs. So let's come back over here and we'll do uh, for J in uh, or so let's have and let's actually create a new list for this so that our jobs are going to be yes i know there's probably a quicker way to do that for j <laughs> job in oh we can't use job let's use for j in jobs and we'll do our uh data is going to be equal to job dot fetch and the ID being equal to a string of J. This is basically me just going back through the uh, the jobs to connect to. And the connection is our Redis connection. I've imported in something I don't need. Thank you. Goodbye. And then we can do print data dot uh, return value like so. So let's save and we should still, we might still have those uh, jobs in there. So we'll do Python three job collection. And there's all the data from the jobs that we already ran the first time we ran the other code. And if I uh, come back here, you can see that this says the result is kept for 500 seconds. So that's all there waiting for us. So that's really cool. So what we've done is we've essentially created a queue and a job system using RQ and Redis, which has been really easy. And then we've basically just said, here's the scraper function that we want to run, give it all the URLs, let it do it. And then we'll just come back later and pick up the results. So all you would do is you would let this all run. And I think if you try to collect results when they're not available, you'd get some kind of, um, you get it back saying it's not done yet. So you can still poll for that and you can work out what you need to get. Then you can do whatever you need to do with your data. This is a great way to do any kind of long running tasks in your application. And I think it works pretty well for web scraping too. So let's just go back to our product queue. So you can see there. So this is basically it.
So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. We're going to expand on this um, and make it into something a bit better and we'll build an application around it. I really want to ex explore the Django part here um, under the integrations for Django. It looks really simple how to use. So this is what we're going to do in the next video. So if you're interested in that and you want to see that working, make sure you subscribe. Also join the Discord. There's loads of people in there now all talking about all different sorts of web scraping stuff. It's fantastic. It's gone better than I could ever imagined. And if you want to watch more web scraping content that I actually get the data like I did in this scraper, you want to watch this video next. Cheers.